This world moving. Come on, you guys play. What are you guys doing in this neck of the woods? Just filming around, goofing off, checking out this half of the world. Hey, Mike, uh, when are you gonna get the mission call? Well, I talked to the bishop about that the other day, and I'm just not sure. What do you mean? Well, lately, I haven't been attending church regularly. Look, Frank. I've still got a lot of questions in my mind that have to be resolved before I can make a decision like that. Well, I guess everybody has to find out for themselves. Yeah, they sure do. We gotta go now. We got a big day ahead. See you now. Don't work too hard. Bye, Frank. Bye. Bye. You guys, you guys take it easy. Kids. I used to think that young people today had it pretty soft with all their money and spare time. But since I joined the church, I've come to realize the pressures and problems they face. Spiritual values are being tested and questioned every day. Take Mike Curtis. Fundamentally, he's a good boy. But I know his parents are worried about him. He's grown up in the church, but it somehow hasn't quite reached him. Today's world is much more complex than mine was. I believe young people today are faced with more problems, more temptations and difficult decisions than any other generation has had to face. They are confused by uncertain voices, by the lure of drugs and by the lowering of moral standards and the fast pace by which we live. I know the church has the answers to all these things, but how do you get young people or anybody to realize that? By developing great teachers in the church, the calling of the gospel teacher is one of the noblest in the world. The good teacher can make all the difference in inspiring boys and girls and men and women to change their lives and fulfill their highest destiny. The importance of the teacher has been beautifully described by Daniel Webster when he said, if we work upon marble, it will perish. If we work upon brass, time will efface it. But if we work upon immortal minds, if we imbue them with principles, with the just fear of God and love of our fellow men, we engrave upon those tablets something that will brighten to all eternity. With this philosophy in mind, the church has established a new program for teacher development. Now you may ask another program, why? Because Satan is on the move as never before. The world is changing rapidly in both positive and negative ways. Teachers in the church must be prepared to meet the challenge of those forces that seek to mold the minds of men. For the first time, all teacher development in the church will be correlated under the direction of the priesthood and carried out in all the stakes, wards, districts, and branches of the church, and will supersede all other teacher training programs. This program is prepared for three groups, present teachers, prospective teachers, and church leaders. And of course, the aim is to inspire the individual member to think about, feel about, and then do something about gospel truths and principles. To do this, we must and will develop great teachers in the church. And one of them could be you. 
Me, a teacher? Bishop, I drive a tractor. <laughs> I know that, but there are other things you can do. Well, maybe so, but a teacher, I'm not. Bishop, I, I appreciate your confidence in me, but... Now look, I... Brother Visco, you're what we call a natural leader. Oh, I've seen you with the youngsters of this ward and with your own family. But a teacher? Bishop, that takes special training. I would be scared to death to stand up in front of a class and teach. You know, I'm glad you realize that. Because that's exactly what you're going to get. Special training. Look, I want to show you something. The new teacher development program consists of three phases. First, the basic course. It's an 11 week training program designed for all teachers and potential teachers. And the in-service program. It's taught on a once a month basis for all teachers and leaders, including activity leaders. This is a continuous program for improving teaching. The supervisory program. Now that's a new kind of teaching partnership between teachers and supervisors. Well, it sounds good, Bishop, but it seems kind of involved. Not actually. This program is a permanent, easy to understand plan for everyone. Clerks, engineers, farmers, doctors, housewives, construction workers like yourself, people with all degrees of experience. We've even enrolled Sister Parker. She's been a teacher in primary for years. <laughs> even Brother Cass is in the program, and he's a college professor. Well, as you can see, there are many things in the basic course that can be used by the experienced as well as the inexperienced, things vital to successful teaching. Does this mean that I've got to go to a lot of extra meetings? Well, yeah. during the basic course, you'll attend a weekly meeting for 11 weeks. Now, these last about an hour and a half and will probably be held during the Sunday school time. Then after that, you'll have an opportunity to attend a monthly in-service meeting. Now, these are held 10 times a year, and they're designed to help you improve your teaching techniques. Now, the in-service program, although built upon the basic course, is administered quite differently. Look, I'll show you. The teacher development director in the ward is responsible for teaching the in-service lessons to priesthood leaders and quorum or group instructors. The presidencies or superintendencies of each ward auxiliary, MIA, primary, Sunday school, and relief society, choose their own in-service leader and conduct the teacher development program for their own workers. The third part of teacher development is supervision. A central manual in supervision is available for leaders and teachers. Supervision is a new kind of teaching partnership rather than a dictatorial relationship. Leaders and teachers work together to bring worthwhile changes in the lives of class members. The basic program operates on the ward level, but it involves stake leaders as well. The stake president calls a high counselor to be the stake teacher development director. His job is to coordinate under the direction of the stake president the activities throughout the stake. Well, that's an outline of the program. How do you feel about it? How did I feel about it? I feel terrible. I've always been taught that you don't refuse a call from the bishop. But I just don't feel I'm teacher material. Look at those kids. In no time at all, they'll be teenagers, facing all kinds of problems like Mike, Sally, others. <laughs> but who am I to think I can help? I know teaching is a high calling and all of that, but I just don't feel up to it. But after some real soul searching, I decided to give it a try. Brother Cassidy, Frank, it's nice to have you here. Thank you. I hope you enjoy this class, Brother Visco. Thank you. Brother Cass, nice to have you here. We're so pleased that all of you could come. This is going to be a marvelous experience, and I'm sure that your commitment to the bishop will be well rewarded. You know, this new program is simple and flexible designed to be used in the smallest branch or in the largest ward. 
This is going to be an experience as you go through the course for the next 11 weeks where you'll enjoy learning how to change the lives of people. Now, before we begin our meeting, could we ask Brother Cass to invite our Heavenly Father to join us here tonight? A basic assumption that we should always be able to make about us. In this orientation meeting, Brother Cassidy reviewed the whole program for us, going over some of what the bishop had shown me in his office several days earlier. Then at our first regular meeting, we really got down to business. Today, brothers and sisters, we're going to talk about the threefold nature of teaching. First, pre-assessment. What does the student know about the subject you're going to teach before you teach the lesson? Second, learning activities. What are you going to teach the student? And how are you going to do it? And then evaluation. What did the student learn when you taught him? Did he learn what you taught him? Did he understand? Did he agree or disagree? So the threefold nature of teaching, pre-assessment, learning activities, and evaluation form the base. I wondered if anybody had taken time to pre-assess and evaluate what Mike had learned in church classes. And with the many As the lessons in the following week continued, I became more and more impressed with the depth of the program. Our second discussion began with a short review of last week's lesson. Then we launched into a discussion on behavior objectives. This was a completely new term to me, but before the class was over, I knew what the teacher was talking about. Well, I hope you all feel as excited about writing behavior objectives as that film and record demonstrate you might be. Now, let's find out just how well you can recognize when you see one a behavior... Our class was small, and by helping each other, we began to feel more and more like a team. We developed some very close friendships. Hi, Jay. Hi, how are you? Sorry I'm late, but I thought I'd stop by the library and get a few materials that help us in our micro-teaching next week. Good, good. Oh, by the way, Frank, I think you're first up to teach next week. In contrast to David, who committed adultery, I was sure nervous that day. Joseph, But participating in micro-teaching while my fellow class members observed gave me a new confidence in my ability as a teacher, and I felt myself really becoming involved in teaching, rather than to commit a sin in the eyes of the Lord. Jay, what does endure to the end mean? Well, that means that you have your mind on a goal, and you stick with it until you make it. Good. Harold? What does pay the price mean? Well, I think that means to put forth the effort to achieve that goal, I guess. Brenda, do you agree with these answers? Yeah. I testify to you that if you pay the price and endure to the end, you shall have the happiness you desire the rest of your lives. I say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thanks for coming. Brother Bisco? Yes? I really want to tell you how much I enjoyed your class today. Thank you. I appreciate that very much. It really motivated me to want to go out and change my life. I felt like you were talking to the young people, to me. You're very kind. Thank you. Frank, you're going to be a fine teacher. Now let's evaluate what's happened in our micro-teaching. It was a rewarding experience, and I was especially pleased when I ran into Brother Cass a few days later. Well, hello, Don. How you doing? Say, Frank, uh, I didn't get a chance to tell you the other day, but, but I thought that was a fine lesson you gave your students. Thank you, Don. Coming from a pro, that's a real compliment. Well, I've been teaching for years, but uh, I've learned things about teaching in this new course that I've never heard before. I think it's given me new insight. Really? Yes, well, it's been nice uh, seeing you, Frank, and we'll see you Sunday. Take it easy, Don. We learned the value of concentrated home study and where we could obtain helpful materials. We went on to learn about maintaining high standards in church teaching, lesson planning, and classroom management. Well, as we can see, Episode two on the record is very helpful. But let me turn to another subject, Brother Cass. 
Supposing you had, uh, say, a lecture class as contrasted to a panel discussion, how would you seat the students in that circumstance? <clears throat> well, of course it would be of prime importance that the speaker's podium and the uh, screen be centrally located so that all could see, and I would think the best arrangement would be to line them in rows and they could then could uh, uh, see the speaker quite clearly. Thank you, Brother Cass. Brother Visco, assuming you had an 11-year-old class and your primary concern was discipline, how would you arrange the seating in that situation? Well, the uh, seating arrangement, uh, I think if you'll uh, put the chairs in a circular area so you can keep an eye contact at all times, I think this is the best arrangement. Thank you very much. Sister Mumford, assume you have a 10-year-old girl in your class who is constantly a discipline problem except when you pay particular attention to her. How would you solve that problem? First of all, if I had pre-assessed the child properly before the class, I should know... Later we were able to apply what we had learned through student teaching. We actually took full responsibility for our church class during the final two weeks of the teacher development course. I was happy to see Mike and his friends come into class, <laughs> even though they were a little late. Now in the 10th chapter of Moroni. Well, did you enjoy that exciting first teaching situation? And we held a short evaluation seminar later. I'm really enthused about this new method of teaching. I actually applied the principles of micro-teaching that I had learned, and it was most effective. Yeah, and in teaching the class today, I'm, uh, I'm quite proud of myself. You know, as, as a teacher of these young and intelligent and grateful people, you know, I believe I might actually help improve their lives. I'm most interested in today's results. I feel a, a new a communication between myself and the students, and I, I feel a, a new appreciation for my students as a result of, uh, of the uh, feedback that I got from today's efforts. I think the students really got the message of what I was trying to get across, and they were involved in the lesson all the time. I have found out in the study of this course that you cannot teach the gospel without the Spirit of the Lord. I was made very much aware of this in our Relief Society lesson this week. By using behavior objectives, I was able to really involve my students with the main idea of the lesson. And I bore my testimony today, and I felt that my young people really learned. Well, I had a bit of a problem today. <laughs> Well, now, don't worry about that, Sister Timothy. I talked to your supervisor, and he said, under the circumstances, you handled that beautifully. Now, <clears throat> next week... To say my learning experience ended with the completion of the basic course would be incorrect, for I found it to be just the beginning. After receiving teaching assignments, all of us were eager to attend continuing and ongoing instruction given through the in-service phase of the program. The teacher development director for the ward handled in-service training for the priesthood organizations. But each auxiliary took charge of its own in-service classes. Here we continued to expand our capabilities and were exposed to new methods. And then on the reel, that'll hold it in place. I was especially grateful to learn about the proper use of media materials and equipment. Turn on the projector again and get ready for the picture. I have been teaching for several months now, and although I may not be able to touch the lives of all I have concern for, those in my class are within my reach. And with growing skills attained through the teacher development program, I'm beginning to sense a great satisfaction in building a foundation of gospel truths in their lives. Gospel truths which may help to carry them safely through many difficult decisions and temptations they will be called upon to face. President Smith reminds us, Good teaching has always been important in the work of the Lord, and even more so 
today when the forces of evil surround us as they do. The general authorities therefore support this new program and urge each of you to do the same, that the lives and testimonies of the saints all over the world will be strengthened by your efforts, for truly you make the difference. <laughs>